Well, good morning, everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday to you. Hopefully, uh, your your week's going well. I got uh, Dad here with me this morning. How you doing, Pop? I'm doing good. Uh, hump day, hey? Eh? I guess so. All that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, yep. maybe not this early in the morning, but <laughs> but but yeah, halfway through the week, and we halfway and we, we we don't even know it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Yep. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. So what's new? Anything? Uh, not really. Um, just I'm I'm starting to get out and about a little bit, but using yeah. social distancing and right. being careful and um, talking to some people. And yeah, it's it's been good. The weather change has been kind of yeah. nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I planted uh, some tomato tomatoes um, just the other day. I know it's too early. Some people say it's too early, it's too. Early. But um, uh, we're taking a chance, and hopefully things will work out there. But yeah, yeah, good. really good stuff. Good stuff. Good. Good. You? Well, how are you doing? I'm, yeah, we're doing good too. Getting uh, yeah, the weather break's been nice. I got. My gutters uh, cleaned out. That was long overdue, and so yeah, that was uh, took some time, got that done, and spent some time outside a lot. And yeah, it's been good, but nothing really new. Yeah, good yeah. deal. Good deal. What yeah. are we? Uh, what are we? What are we talking about today? We we gonna we're gonna. So I just thought with uh, with all these rescue stories coming in, and and keep them coming. By the way, if you haven't done one and find the courage to do one, we encourage you to do that. And uh, post it online. I think it's a uh, uh, hashtag my rescue story or hashtag my LC church. Keep posting those. Those are those are awesome. And so I was just thinking uh, to go along with that to to show kind of a rescue story uh, here in the scripture. So we are going to go in the book of Acts uh, and we're going to look at chapter nine and we're going to look at Saul's conversion from Saul uh, to Paul and uh, this amazing story. Uh, that happened to him, and uh, I think it'll I think it'll uh, uh, spark some good conversation, and, and maybe perhaps a story you have or I have, and and uh, uh, yeah, so yeah, let's just let's dive into this. Um, how about it's it's 18 verses long is is what I want to go over. So how about I read the first half and you read the second half, and then All we'll right. just back and come back and revisit. Super good. Yeah. All right. So I'm reading out of the, the New Living Translation, um, and this is, again, Acts chapter 9, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 9, and then Dad's going to pick up 10 through 18. So here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, here we go. Uh, verse 1, it says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them both men and women, <coughs> excuse me, both men and women back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by, hand, by the hand to Damascus. He remained, there, he remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer, verse 10, now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision calling Ananias. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas, where you, when you arrive, ask for Saul of Tarshish. He is praying to me right now. I am shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in 
and laying his hands on him so that he can see again. But Lord, exclaimed Ananias, I've heard about the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem. And we hear that he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest every believer in Damascus. But the Lord said, go and do what I say. For Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he must suffer for me. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you may get your sight back and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and was strengthened. Whoa. <laughs> That's, so in those 18 verses, I, I realize there is a lot in there. So uh, we probably don't have time to go break it down all 18 maybe we do we'll see but so i just realized for all you watching there's there's a lot in there and this i think can spark a lot of really neat conversations so um let's just kind of go back and, and just kind of pick this apart a little bit um from the start so i i mean that very first verse when you're, when you're talking about saul i mean so my version says saul was uttering threats with every breath i mean the hate that was in this guy's heart uh, was a bunch of hate. I mean, he hated anybody that that had anything to do with with following the Lord. And and so then it says, and he was eager to kill the Lord's followers. Um, so he's looking to arrest them, kill them. He wants to he wants to get rid of these people, um, bring them back in chains. It says, and uh, so then he's he's on his way. He gets the permission to do that. And so he's on his way to go get him on this uh, as he's approaching Damascus, it says, and light from heaven shone down around him. And then verse four, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Um, and I think it's interesting there in verse five, again, in my version, it says, who are you, Lord? I find that interesting that Saul, this guy who hates anything to do with, with people following Jesus, acknowledges him as Lord. Who, who are you, Lord? You know, he's he's saying that. I, I just think that's kind of interesting in that. Um, and then we see Jesus' reply. Uh, he says, I'm Jesus, the one you're persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Um, it, yeah, I, yeah, any thoughts so far? Go ahead. Yeah, I find it very, very interesting that Saul was doing what he thought was right. Right. It was right in his eyes. He right. he didn't know different. Uh, this was what he was sent to do. He was commissioned to do. He was on a mission, and he was going to do it to the best of his ability, and that meant killing killing Christians. Right. I mean, just bottom line. So it, it's interesting to me that sometimes we can think we're doing right. We know we're doing right. And all of a sudden, we find out, uh, I guess I'm not doing that right. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that is a, uh, uh, the bright light on the road to Damascus when that happens to us, for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Well, it's a humbling, uh, <clears throat> that's definitely a humbling thing that happens to you, too, because when you think you've been right all this time, all of a sudden you found out you were wrong all this time. That's a, it's a pretty big piece of humble pie to swallow. And uh, so we, we can choose to, to take that and be, have some humility in that and say, wow, I have been wrong. But lots of times we, we don't do that. We end up justifying why we did what we did or, or making another excuse. And, and uh, you know, that's obviously not what we should do. Uh, we need to show some humility in that. And, uh, so I wonder if that's what Saul did there, you know, as he, you know, this, this light shines on him and hears this voice of Jesus. Uh, and what's so cool at verse seven, you know, it's a, so obviously there are other guys with Saul too, going to go help him in his quest to uh, uh, arrest these Christians. 
Uh, it says the men with Stahl stood speechless, saw no one uh, around him, but heard someone's voice. Um, and then it says Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, uh, he was blind uh, and he remained blind for three days. And then it says he did not eat or drink. And I just, I wonder, I wonder if that's where some humility might've come in there where he is just like maybe so broken over what he's been doing where, you, you know, you talked about where he thought he was right all this time and now he's not. And he's, you know, I'm sure he's scared. He's blind. Maybe doesn't know exactly why he's blind. He can't see, but heard this voice of Jesus. Uh, and maybe the last thing he's thinking about because he is so humbled is eating or drinking. I, you know, I don't know. What, what do you think about that? Well, uh, you know, was he fasting? I find it interesting that, uh, he was blind for three days. Three mm. days is, uh, is an interesting uh, number here. Uh, right. um, when Christ was crucified, um, he was dead for three days. And I'm guessing that there's some type of correlation there. Um, Saul was blind for three days. He, he, he didn't eat. He didn't drink. He, he might as well have been dead right. uh, for those right. three days. Uh, maybe uh, God wanted to uh, uh, have him experience uh, just a just a, a, a fraction of what Jesus um, of his experience. And I, right. I, I don't know, but the fast uh, he didn't have. You know, I don't know if he wasn't hungry. I would think in three days he would be hungry, but maybe right. he was so scared that he just couldn't eat. I mean, we've. We've all been there. Um, I don't know about for three days, but yeah. This yeah, and it, you know, it, it doesn't say what he does, what he does in those three days, or what he's doing. It seems like he's not doing anything. And I, you know, he could he could have reacted a lot of different ways. Um, oh, yeah. His his first encounter with with Jesus, and he and he makes me go blind. I, you know, may, he could have turned. I could have just made him more angry and want want to make him all the more go kill more of these people. Cause look what this, look what your God does to me. He turned me blind and, and, you know, I'm just, I'm just doing what I thought was right. And now I encounter him and he, and he makes me blind for three days. You know, it could have went a lot of different ways. I, I'm, I'm guessing though, um, it really did humble him and it, and it, you know, it, it uh, made him stay in a place where he, he couldn't do much, you know, um, you know, obviously he's blind and, not eating or drinking. So I, I'm sure there was some, uh, some fear there of what is happening to me. Um, maybe thinking about those words that, that Jesus told him, you know, um, maybe he's just waiting and just being obedient because the words that Jesus told him, he says, now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. And he hasn't been told yet. So maybe he's just going and he's, that's all he can think about. What, one of these instructions coming out, you know, I don't know. Yeah, another interesting thing, um, he was a leader. He was leading this band. I don't know how big the group was, uh, but here he is on the Damascus Road, and uh, uh, this blinding light comes. I, I, you know, I've got some questions in my mind. He went blind. How come the rest of them go blind? They kind of saw the right, same thing right. as what he did. Uh, but God was uh, uh, after him, I guess. He, yeah. he was targeting him for a mission of his. Um, and you, you talked about being humble. Here Saul is, he is a leader and now he can't lead. So now mm -hmm. he's got to depend on those who he's brought with him, who he was commanding. And they basically, you know, carry him into the city. And, you know, what are they doing during this three days? I mean, they're right. just kind of hanging out. Hey, you know, this, our leader, what, what, what's going on with him? I'm, I, I don't know if there was reports coming back to them. Yeah, I'm still blind. Um, you know, nothing's right. happened yet. I'm kind of waiting on whatever this voice is uh, to take place and nothing's taken place. But um, definitely that there was, there was humility there. I, I, I that's pretty cool. Um, well, in verse 10, it says, now there was a believer. I, I like that, that, uh, uh, Ananias was a believer. He was a, evidently a strong believer. 
um, he was already in Damascus and the Lord spoke to him. I'm wondering there again, is this the first time that the Lord ever spoke to Ananias? Uh, did he know the Lord's voice? I, right. I, I don't know. Well, but, so mine says, does your say, mine says the Lord spoke to him in a vision calling. Is uh, it? Uh, yes, it does. It does yeah. say that. Yes, yeah. correct. Yes. But he immediately resp responded, yeah. uh, right. and I'm going to say, probably out loud yes lord yes right. lord mm -hmm. and, and um and then he gets his instruction uh to go to see this man who is killing in his eyes everybody right i mean everybody and he's oh. going to kill me if i go right. see especially him. especially people like him like ananias yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i'm coming to him with a word from the lord who he evidently hates and yeah I'm I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man walking. Basically, yeah. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk into my grave if I go see this guy because he's got power that I don't have. Right. I'm just envisioning what he's thinking. Uh, but he's he's uh, he's commissioned, I would say, uh, to go and to lay hands on this man. On this, well, to put it bluntly, to this murderer. Yeah. This murderer, I mean, uh, Ananias didn't know any different. All he had heard was, this guy's going to kill. He's killing all the Christians. Yeah. Um, he says uh, in verse 13, he says, I've heard the, about the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem. Uh, wow, what courage it had to take for Ananias to even muster up enough to step out of his door. And right. Even, I mean, I can't believe he didn't do a Jonah thing and walk the right. other way. Right, right. I was thinking the same thing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it it took a lot. It had to take a lot of courage in him and, and faith in, in God to go, okay, I mean, this could cost me my life and what you're asking me to do, um, mm. but I'm going to go do it. I mean, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot right there. There uh, is. Yeah. Wow. What, what, a, what a great example uh, Ananias is to us that, Okay, I'm in this all the way, and even if it's going to cost me my life, and and I would think Ananias probably thought this is going to be it. I mean, this yeah. guy, yeah, yeah, this is going to be it. Yeah. And I I think uh, you probably know, maybe those who are watching know, you, you probably know people like like Ananias. I'll lay my I'll lay down my life for the Lord. You know, if he asks me, I'm doing it. I don't. I don't care what it is. I've I've known awesome, awesome uh, uh, Christian men and women who have who who will do that. Who who are sold out. Who are all in. We had a series what quite a few years ago about being all in. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool well, stuff. And, and on the flip side, on the flip side of that, there's probably those of you that know people like Saul. And you're going, nope, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking to them or I'm not bringing this up with them because whatever, not that they would kill you, but, but maybe you just, you know, you just want to avoid that really hard conversation or it might bring up bad feelings, wh whatever the situation might be. There, there might be some, some Saul's in, in our lives that we're too afraid to talk to. And that's where, you know, drawing this strength from this story and, and seeing Ananias' uh, obedience and, and faithfulness in this could could might might spur you on uh, yeah. to do that. So yeah, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, uh, sharing. Oh. We're sharing each other's story with a gentleman right now, and uh, um, he's walking an awesome, awesome path and making changes in his life, and uh, he's got a lot of courage because yeah. he thought what was right. Uh, isn't quite right, and uh, he's making some changes, and and he's a work in progress, and he gets down on himself, and uh, but but boy, God's working on him. It's it's a it's an awesome awesome thing. Uh, awesome. I I love what God's doing to him. Um, so then in fifteen it says, but the Lord said, go and do what I say. Uh, and he 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 spoke to Ananias and said, Saul is my chosen instrument. Uh, wow. To be a chosen instrument. Well, and, and just think about the <laughs> instrument that he chose there in Saul. I, yeah. I mean, what, 
I'm, I'm going, God, are you crazy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? You're choosing this guy who is killing your people, your followers, and you call him your, his, your chosen instrument. Yeah. How awesome. I mean, yeah. so for anyone that would go, you know, my past is too much for God to handle or, or just the way I'm living right now, or, you know, I mean, is there a stronger example of, of, I mean, this, I don't know how many people saw killed. Um, but I mean, you talk about a, a awful past and even how he's currently living yet. God says, I'm, I'm going to use him. I'm, I'm choosing him because I love him. I, I love, so I created it. Wow. I mean, that for all of us, I mean, I, you know, in my own life, you know, there's, we all have pasts and, and, and stuff, but <laughs> I, not to get into the comparison game, but I've never killed anybody, you know? And so just to, again, just to think that, wow, God, God can do whatever he wants to do through whoever he wants to do it through. And, uh, that's, that's a pretty awesome thing. It is. It is. I, yeah, I, <clears throat> I can't imagine. And once the conversion took place, I can't imagine Saul said, I can't believe he chose me. Right. I mean, right. I said that about me. I can't believe he chose me. Me? Right. <clears throat> well, yeah, that, that would be cool to, to, to talk to him one day and, and ask him, how did, how did you feel during that time? I mean, were you just blown away? Did you feel just so um, forgiven or, or just redeemed, relieved, whatever it was that, wow, here, God. God chose me after all I've done, and and yet He still is calling me His own. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, to finish up uh, in seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen, uh, just a couple of things. Ananias went and found Saul. He so he did what he said he was supposed to do. Yep. Um, he laid hands on him just as he was told, and said, "Brother Saul," uh, and and again, <laughs> he calls him Brother Saul. I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. I'd just say, hey, man, uh, right. but anyway, brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared. So uh, I think he was using Jesus as a shield here because he didn't say I, I came. He said, brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road. And he don't know if he did or not. I mean, he wasn't there. He just took the Lord's word. And anyway, yeah. he said he has sent me so that you may get your sight back and be filled with Holy Spirit. Um, wow. Uh, that, that, that had to, again, take some courage. And I'm, I'm guessing that he was hoping that Saul would go, yeah, that happened to me. Yeah. That happened. Right. You heard, you heard right. And thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. um, so instantly uh, Saul was regained his sight. Uh, as soon as he laid his hands on him, um, and then, I mean, it goes into, uh, he got up and got baptized and afterwards he ate some food. So there was fasting in all of that. Um, he Although got I, up. I don't go know ahead. if, I don't know if he knew he was fasting. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. He just, yeah, his focus was just on what had happened to him and, and, you know, meeting Jesus and then, you know, now being blind. And I love the wording. Uh, in verse 18, where it says, instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. I've had moments in my life, I don't know about you, where there has been those moments where uh, almost the scales just fell, and I was able to realize, wow, I was, I've been wrong all this time. And, and, and yeah, the scales have been have fallen from my eyes, and I see, I really see uh, what's right here and, and what I need to be doing. Um, so, you know, and maybe for you, all of you watching, listening, um, maybe you've had those moments where it seems like the scales fell from your eyes and, and I hope you have, um, and you've encountered God in that, that way. Um, and if you can share that in any way, maybe comment below, uh, maybe a quick story or, you know, I don't know, or, or a verse, whatever you want to do. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, go ahead, Dan. Well, I, I, I just want to share just a quick story um, um, uh, about not knowing. Um, so um, 
I had, we, we, Sue and I had been going to life changing uh, LCRF at the time and I uh, didn't really know what my role was. Uh, I wanted to serve, I wanted to help, I wanted to do anything I could. And, uh, and, and I believe it was a vision, a dream, a word from the Lord. Um, uh, we, I had a short conversation with him and uh, it went something like this. He said to me, uh, you want to walk on water, don't you? And I thought, uh, yeah, I don't know what that means, but, um, and he said to me, you will. And I, I, I didn't know, I didn't know what that meant. I thought, yeah, I, I, I want to do that. I, I don't know what that means. I can't physically walk on water or can I, I didn't know. Uh, it was shortly after that that um, I shared that with uh, the pastors at Life Changing, and um, um, Pastor Byron asked me to be the, uh, at that time, the campus pastor or CARES pastor, basically. And uh, I thought, hmm, would this be walking on water? I'm stepping out in faith. I don't know how to do this. I'm not trained. I'm, um, But it's been one of the greatest things that has ever happened to me. I love, I love my church. Uh, I love doing what I get to do and being with people. So uh, sometimes we don't know. He'll, right. he'll give us a, 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 a vision, a word. Uh, and we just got to kind of follow that in as uh, Saul in blind faith. Right. Oh, that's and, good. That's good. Yeah. And uh so I believed I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but it sure has worked out well. That's awesome. That's a great, great story. And, and uh, you know, I think it's uh, so for me, um, I've got I knew I wanted to go into ministry since the sixth grade and uh, um, but never really did anything about it, didn't pursue it. Uh, it was just like God kept kept kind of calling me that way. And, and, uh, and I remember just thinking, man, God, why are you choosing me? I don't have any schooling. I don't have any knowledge about this. Um, but I, you can go back to this story here with Saul and, and his conversion and Damascus, you know, he didn't, he didn't have any schooling. He didn't have any training in this. God just called him because God said, I'm going to do this through you. And again, God, God can do whatever he wants to do and use whoever he wants to use. And, and, and uh, so I hope that that encourages anybody listening to, I mean, it encouraged me and to, to go ahead and said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to walk on this road kind of like in blind faith. I, I don't really know what I'm doing, uh, but, but here we go, God, I, I'm going to trust you in this and, and uh, trust that you're going to guide my steps and, you know, ministry now, I've been in ministry uh, almost 14 years. Uh, it's crazy, uh, but uh, it's been, it's been awesome. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're going to pray. Yeah, let's pray. <laughs> All right. You, you want to, what do you want to do? Um, your dad, you, you call it. What are you going to okay. do? I'll let you pray for our country. I'll pray for yeah. uh, the people. Alone. Okay. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Father, uh, thank you for today. Um, what a way to start out our day. Uh, with you in mind, and Lord God, we we just thank you for this uh, uh, scripture reference that we have um, looked at. Uh, we thank you for Saul, not for who he was, but for who he is and who he became because of you. So, Lord God, we thank you for that conversion. We thank you for every conversion that has ever happened. Uh, we've all been walking a wrong road, uh, doing this or doing that. Uh, but somehow, some way, we have found our way to you, and uh, you have pursued us, and you've allowed us to join you in what you're doing. So, Father, I just thank you for that. I thank you that you have chosen us, that you didn't make any junk, even though we've been on a wrong road at times. Uh, you have rescued us so that we could have a rescue story, and that being Jesus. So, Father... Um, we can't do this on our own. Uh, we're so thankful that uh, Jesus went to a cross, a cruel cross for each one of us and uh, died for us 
So, Father, thank you for the plan that you have for each one of our lives. We thank you for the many, many conversions. Um, thank you for uh, loving us right where we're at. We just thank you, and uh, we just praise you today and ask it all in Jesus' name. Lord, it's, uh, it's another day that you've given us and day that you've made, and so, Lord, may we rejoice in that. and, and uh, uh, Lord, that's what we want to do. Lord, we want to continue praying for our country. Uh, Lord, may we may we never stop doing that. Uh, may we always pray for those uh, leaders who have been appointed, uh, voted in, whatever it might be. And, and Lord, may we pray for them that uh, they may follow you and come to know you uh, in a very real way, uh, not just a, in a surface way, but to have a relationship with you. And uh, so, Lord, I, I just pray over our, our country, and, and I'm just so thankful for the country that we live in, for the freedoms that we get to experience and enjoy, uh, Lord, the freedom that we have even right now to, to pray openly uh, to you and to, to not be uh, persecuted about this or have to do it in secret. Lord, I know there's places like that, but Lord, we, we're we blessed to live in a place that isn't like that. And so, Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And and uh, so, Lord, I just pray that we, we would never take that for granted, uh, Lord, that we would uh, uh, make the most of this opportunity that we have in the land that we live in uh, to pray for our country, uh, to pray for um, our fellow Americans and, and our government and our president. And, and so, Lord, we, we lift them all up to you. And, Lord, we pray for their protection. Uh, we pray for their um, decision-making, Lord, that they would uh, make their decisions based on um, what your word says and, and based on the Bible. And, and uh, so, Lord, I, I just... Uh, Again, I'm so thankful uh, for where we get to live. And and uh, so, Lord, um, again, we just pray over our country, uh, pray that uh, as this uh, um, new normal looks like it's 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 coming in now, uh, Lord, that we would all use wisdom uh, on how to do this. Uh, Lord, we pray that uh, the virus would continue to decrease and, and just uh, stop altogether. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for those who are um, sick, Lord, that uh, you would just touch their bodies and make them well. Um, and, and so, Lord, uh, just thank you for, again, who you are, how you love us. And uh, Lord, again, I, I, I know we feel very blessed to live where we get to live. And uh, so Lord, we thank you for that. God, we love you and praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I, I just want to say something. And I'm thinking uh, there's probably people who are feeling the same thing. It's interesting because we don't plan exactly what we're going to do or how we're going to do it and what we're going to say. It just happens. I love it that the scripture comes alive as we're, yeah. as we're discussing it. And it leads us down this road and down that road and this experience and that memory. And uh, I love that about scripture and what yep. it does, how it well, inspires it's the scripture says that the word of God is alive and active and it, yeah, it just proves itself every day. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Awesome. All righty. Well, have an awesome day, man. All right. Blessings all take care. Hey, everybody have a great day. Yep.